You've got a budget, you've got the parts list, but you got one more big decision staring back at you. Do you spend more money on the CPU or the GPU? It used to be simple. Max out the GPU and just buy a CPU that wouldn't bottleneck it. That was the rule, that was the meta. But that rule book doesn't really apply anymore in 2025 because now mid-range GPUs are hitting $700 and might not even be in stock. Top tier CPUs like the 9800X3D are in stock, sometimes getting cheaper and delivering frame rate consistency that GPU upgrades can't even touch. In this video, I'm gonna show you the new reality, how more and more PC gamers are flipping the formula, buying high-end CPUs with mid-range GPUs and actually getting better gameplay because of it. We're gonna benchmark two combinations side by side, a traditional balance setup, and now what I'm seeing from the community as the new meta. If you're on the fence about which CPU to choose for your next build, especially if you play competitive shooters or you want your rig to stay fast for years to come, then this is the video that'll make your decision way easier. And we're testing all of this on a beautiful new testing rig that I built live on my Twitch live stream, full of our RGBs, which I'm controlling with Signal RGB, the sponsor of today's video. If you've ever built a PC with parts from different brands, you know the headache. Nothing syncs and you end up with a light show that looks more random than reactive. Signal RGB fixes that. It pulls everything together from fans, strips, keyboards, and mice into one clean, unified system that actually responds to what you're doing in game. Or if you're in your mid-30s like me, you could just set it all to one color and call it a day. That works too. Signal RGB controls over 5,000 devices from brands such as Corsair, Razer, Logitech, so if it lights up, Signal RGB probably supports it. And setup is super simple. No BIOS diving or weird config files. You just download, press some buttons, it's done. You can try it out for free now and customize everything. Want clutch plays to trigger a light show or red alerts when your temperatures spike? That's easy. My setups never looked better. Just don't ask me about my cable management because unfortunately it doesn't help with that. Hit the link down in the description to level up your RGB game today with Signal RGB. Okay, so let's first talk about the more traditional traditional way of picking PC parts, just in case if you're brand new to the master race. Typically, gamers are concentrated on perfectly balancing the CPU and GPU combination so that the GPU isn't being bottlenecked by the CPU. If you buy an RTX 5090, but pair it with a Ryzen 5 5500, you're not gonna get the full processing power of that $3,000 GPU. Typically, gamers will wanna get a just good enough CPU that it doesn't hold back the performance of the GPU, but that's usually all they're shooting for. We've always known that a better CPU can can give you higher frame rates in certain titles, especially CPU intensive titles like city builders, simulation games, and competitive shooters, but most mid-range CPUs like Ryzen 5s and Intel i5s are good enough to pair with whatever GPU you want as long as you're buying the latest generation. For some examples, the Ryzen 5 5600 paired super well with RTX 3060s and RX 6600 XTs, but that didn't stop people from pairing it with higher end RTX 3080s and RX 6800 XTs. Same thing with the Ryzen 5 7600. That pairs very well with an RTX 4060 and RX 7600, but gamers were often going way beyond that, pairing it with RTX 4080s and RX 7900s. In the past, gamers didn't have a problem pairing a high-end GPU with a mid-range CPU because it wouldn't be bottlenecked. Spending more of your total PC budget on the GPU should be the goal because the GPU is the one component with the biggest impact on your FPS. It seemed like for the longest time that the only gamers that were buying the high-end CPU CPUs like the 7800X3Ds were or the people with an unlimited budget and also buying the 4090s. Let's fast forward to the current situation and it's almost flip-flopped without people really noticing. Everywhere I look, it seems that more people are going with a super high-end X3D CPU like the 7800X3D or 9800X3D and pairing that with a mid-range GPU like the RTX 5070, 4070, or 7700 XT. The reason this is happening is because the price of GPUs is just out of control and the term mid-range GPU refers to cards that are like $700. People don't wanna spend that kind of money on gaming, much less for a single component in the entire system. More and more people are buying these quote mid-range GPUs instead of the higher end ones. That's also because the 5080s and 5090s are virtually nowhere to be found anywhere remotely close to MSRP. But now because of that, upgrading your CPU is now like the low hanging fruit if you wanna just easily improve your FPS. The Ryzen 5 7600 
RTX and 9600X make for a super balanced pairing with an RTX 5070 or RX 9070, but more people are now just defaulting to the 9800X 3D. Going from a 9600X to a 9800X 3D will cost you a bit over $200 extra, but it's guaranteed improvement since that CPU is no longer hard to find and it's readily in stock. The same thing can't be said about upgrading your GPU because if you want to spend $200 more than the RTX 5070, there is no guarantee that you're going to be able to find a 5070 Ti at a fair price. Hopefully that all made sense so far, but there are even two more reasons why people are defaulting to a higher end CPU. The next one is just because gamers are getting sweaty. We've always known that the CPU has a huge impact on not just your FPS average number in competitive shooters, but it also greatly affects the frame rate consistency, which is what really matters. Getting an average FPS of 150 in Valorant sounds perfectly fine on paper, but if that average of 150 includes spiking up to 180 and sometimes dropping down to 120, you're going to get frustrated when that happens when you're trying to clutch up. To combat that, gamers can just buy a better CPU and not just one with more cores and more threads, but one that has new technology that's specifically better for running these games. 3D vCache, and that's exactly what makes the 9800X 3D and 7800X 3D so powerful when it comes to gaming. And yeah, real quickly, a CPU like the 7600X 3D could have simply just been the middle ground in this entire conversation. If that wasn't limited to just Micro Center here in the United States, I probably wouldn't even be making this video. Now, I'm not going to dive too deep on this whole 3D vCache technology because honestly, I'm not super nerd enough to even know a whole lot about it. And quite frankly, I don't think gamers really care too much about it either. For a very easy rundown, our CPUs have built in memory called cache. And this is what helps quickly access important data instead of going out to use the slower RAM on your motherboard. The more cache it has, the better, especially in games where quick reactions matter. The 3D vCache technology stacks on top of the CPU, so it's kind of like a bonus memory layer, giving the CPU more instant memory to pull from. This ends up having a huge positive impact in games such as competitive shooters, strategy games, and open world RPGs. Now, the third reason why people are just defaulting to these higher end CPUs is because it gives you way more future proofing potential. If you buy a mid range CPU right now, there's no guarantee that it won't bottleneck your next GPU upgrade one or two generations from now. Now. In the future, you'll want to upgrade that GPU, and it sucks when in order to do that, you also have to buy a new CPU to keep the system balanced. Instead, if you buy the highest end CPU right now, in a couple of years, it'll still pair well with the newer generation GPUs. No type of future proofing in PC building is 100% guaranteed, obviously, but this is certainly a method that increases the odds that your PC will stay relevant for much longer by only upgrading your GPU. So, to recap this whole meta shift, instead of gamers typically buying a mid range GPU, GPU with a mid-range CPU, more and more people are starting to get that mid-range GPU with a high-end CPU like the 9800X 3D. So for the second half of this video, we're going to benchmark and compare to see what that mindset shift translates to out in the real world of PC gaming. This build here is what I consider a pretty cut and dry mid to high-end system and exactly the realistic framework of when gamers are making this CPU mindset shift. Other than the CPU, we have an ASRock X870 Pro RS Wi-Fi motherboard, 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM clocked at 6,000 megahertz with a CL rating of 30. The GPU is an XFX Swift 3X OC RX 9070, which looks beautiful by the way, and everything's inside the Montec XR wood. Here's the full parts list in case you happen to want to copy a build like this for yourself. I'll have links to all the products down in the description. Oh, and also big shout out to Montec for supplying us not just with this XR wood case, which looks phenomenal, but also their new Hyperflow Silent 360 AIO, which will keep both our CPU choices running at chilly temperatures, so that doesn't become a factor in today's testing. Speaking of which, to pair with our mid-ranged RX 9070, we have what I consider the traditional choice and the new meta. The traditional choice and the one I would have recommended is the Ryzen 5 9600X, which you can pick up for actually now under $200 pretty consistently. Pairing up the new Ryzen 5 with whatever the current generation of GPU is has always been an easy pick. But what we're comparing that against today is the CPU that I've personally seen more gamers use recently, and that's the over $400 Ryzen 7 9 x 3D. Oh, and just for the record, this whole meta shift isn't based on concrete numbers or sophisticated research. This is just a trend that I've personally noticed by being in the trenches of the PC building community with you guys and by actually reading the comment section. So first up is Valorant, and I'm not going to lie, on a system like this, these results are pretty irrelevant if you ask me. With the 9600X using 1440p and Pro settings, we got an average FPS of exactly 700, but with the 9800X 3D, that jumped up to 806 FPS. Now, that is in fact a significant 15% increase in performance just from 
from the CPU choice, but you wouldn't be able to convince me that anyone can see that difference with the frame rates being so high. Now, where some PC gamers will feel a difference is with Counter-Strike 2. This is about to get super sweaty, by the way, just stick with me for a quick minute. With the 9600X using 1440p and Pro settings, we got an average FPS of 346. With the 9800X 3D, that shot all the way up to 510 FPS, which is a huge 47% increase in performance. Now look, I get it. Most of us peasant gamers would be perfectly happy with 346 FPS, but this FPS difference is exactly the difference that the sweaty gamers want to see these days. Our gaming monitors are now easily getting up to the 3, 4, and 500 hertz ratings, and even if you're gaming at 360 hertz, you'll still feel that stability difference going from 346 FPS to 510. Would a mid-30s gamer dad like myself feel that kind of difference? Probably not, so let's show a game where people like me will actually see the difference. In the finals, which everyone thinks I should be playing now that X Defiant is officially dead, by using 1440p and pro settings, the 9600X got an average FPS of 166. That's certainly not bad, but it's also barely saturating a standard 165 hertz monitor. Not to mention, many gamers are going beyond that hertz rating up into the 200 hertz range or even further, like I just mentioned. Now with the 9800X 3D, that 166 FPS average gets improved all the way up to 225 FPS, and that difference even slow gamers like myself will appreciate. That's a 36% increase in performance, and remember, the reason why that's important is because you can easily just make that CPU swap because it's always in stock. For some more examples, Fortnite went from 309 FPS in 1440p Pro settings up to 400 FPS, 29%. Rust went from 117 FPS in 1440p High to 161 FPS, 38%. Ark Survival Evolved went from 97 FPS in 1440p Epic to 138, 42%. And even the new Splitgate 2 had a small improvement going from 293 FPS in 1440p Pro to 325, 11%. Now, the FPS average isn't the only number that's important, especially in competitive gaming. The 1% low is also super important because FPS consistency is what you need during those clutch situations where it's 1v1 at the end of a round. You don't want your FPS bouncing all over the place when you're trying to aim, especially if they throw something graphical like a smoke bomb at you. The 9800X3D can really help in this 1% low department, so here's some examples of that. In Counter-Strike 2, that 1% low frame rate went from 150 FPS to 210. The finals went from 98 to 130, and Fortnite went went from 146 to 202. I know a lot of people, especially the sweats, will argue that those improvements are what have the biggest impact to your smooth and consistent gaming experience. And remember, all of that FPS improvement can happen if you simply decide to buy a better CPU because it's actually in stock. However though, sometimes all that extra money doesn't equate to any difference in performance at all. All those games that I just mentioned were either competitive titles or big open world games. Those titles rely a lot on the CPU. For other games that are more graphically demanding, they are at the mercy of your GPU, and as long as it's not being bottlenecked, the CPU choice barely becomes a factor. Here's Starfield, where in 1440p Ultra settings, we got 93 FPS with the 9600X and only 94 FPS with the 9800X 3D. That's literally within margin of error. Assassin's Creed Shadows also stayed within margin of error using 1440p and Ultra settings. Monster Hunter Wilds had a small boost in 1440p Ultra going from 92 FPS with the 9600X up to 99 FPS FPS with the 9800X 3D. For Helldivers 2 and 1440p Ultra, that went from 85 to 86 FPS for another margin of error. And for Star Wars Battlefront 2, which everyone seems to randomly start playing again, we got 196 FPS in 1440p Ultra settings with the 9600X, and that only jumped up to 199. Keep in mind, that's entirely because there's a 200 FPS cap in this game, which we couldn't remove, but still, a better CPU does not help in this situation at all. For those examples, the game is being bound by the GPU, which remember, is perfectly fine and usually what you want, but a better CPU doesn't really help. Again, this concept only applies if your CPU is not bottlenecking the GPU. If you tested a Ryzen 5 5500 paired with this 9070, you're gonna get lower FPS numbers in literally every single title compared to what we just tested. So what does all of this data mean if you're brand new to PC gaming and you're just trying to figure out which CPU you should go with? It all depends on which type of gaming experience you want. Personally, as a mid-30s dad gamer that mostly does 
doesn't touch competitive titles anymore, I want as much graphic fidelity that I can get in my AAA single player games, so I'm still leaning towards allocating as much of my budget towards the GPU as possible, making sure to not bottleneck it. If you're a teens or young 20s gamer that's grinding up the ranks of Counter-Strike until 4 a.m., I'd consider squeezing in more CPU budget so you can get an X3D chip, even if you're only buying a mid-range GPU. The beautiful thing about PC gaming is that we can custom tailor our PC builds to the type of gaming experience that we personally want. Console gamers don't really have this option outside of some quick settings that some games may let you toggle. With a gaming PC, we have full control over getting the exact level of performance that we want with whatever our budget allows. Now, there is one major downside of this entire meta shift and that it's gonna increase the price of your total build cost outside of just the CPU. If you're gonna go with the highest end CPU like a 9800X3D, you're most likely gonna wanna pair that with a much better motherboard. Some mid-ranged B650 boards will still handle an X3D chip just fine, but if you're going all in on a $400 plus CPU, you probably don't wanna pair it with a $100 bare bones motherboard. With the CPU improvement and motherboard improvement, that could boost up the total cost of your build three, four, maybe even $500. So obviously you gotta keep that in mind. So yeah, that's the new meta, high-end CPU, mid-range GPU, and smoother gameplay where it actually counts. If you want more benchmarks from this test, the full run is on the ZTT Extras channel and it's on the screen right now. Or if you just wanna see how this testing rig came together, the condensed down build live stream is right next to it. Thanks for watching and drop a comment to let me know how you're prioritizing your CPU and GPU choices.